Welcome to this new Motoguzzi Griso owner's tune-up and eventual reflash of his bike. This is part one of a three or four part series on tuning up the Motoguzzi Griso completely before I do the reflash. I'm no Motoguzzi expert, in fact this is the first one I have ever owned. I've got three other bikes and I am quite experienced with the mechanics and doing my own tune-ups on bike. By all means, use this as a reference, but double check everything that I do and say for your own recognizance and to make sure that your bike is not going to get damaged by me. I bear no responsibility for what you do to your bike based on this video. As I mentioned later, my valve settings are not those mentioned in the Good C Workshop Manual, but from Pete Roper and others online who have got experience with this bike. To you guys who don't own a Moto Good C, just consider this motorcycle ASMR. If you want to go to sleep at night, put this on. I guarantee you, you'll fall asleep. Here we go with, first of all, the valves, the air filter, and the spark plugs in part one of this retune of the Moto Guzzi Griso 8 valve. This is a 2016 model, and I will eventually be balancing the throttle bodies and then doing the much vaunted Beetle Reflash. Thanks, Beetle. Little lean. Comparison with a uh, new plug. Slightly different. It was what was recommended. EKB to EIX. This is Iridium. And you'll notice that the electrodes are different. Be interesting to see how that works. Already gapped. Okay, so left hand uh, rocker cover is off as well. You'll see a chopstick in here. I've marked it where top dead center is roughly. I've gone around a couple of cycles and uh, through the, you know, suck, squeeze, bang, blow cycle, the four cycles. And um, you can tell you're in the right cycle. You can tell that you have done the, uh, the, the, the squeeze and the, and the bang um, and they're done with. Uh, and you can tell you're on the right cycle for adjusting because when you uh, move the the rocker heads here, they actually move a little. I don't know if you can, that was my knuckle. <laughs> Moving very, very slightly. Before I carry on, I should show you that I have one of these Guzzi stands. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the Grizzo lifter. I'll just turn this around here so you can see it. It's called the, the Grizzo lifter and uh, it comes um, from Becker Technik in Germany and it's worked really well. Basically there's a through bar here you have to screw it up screw these wing nuts up there's one on the other side until you can press this into these bolts right here and there's a a very fine collar that goes in either side of the bolt and it's very secure and sturdy I couldn't believe it. it's quite hard to lift the bike onto it you have to stand kind of behind the bike and lift up luckily I've got a shelf a parcel shelf on it but once it's on, it's really secure. Of course, being a single-sided swing arm, there is uh, no way to use paddock stand or anything like that. So this, uh, this I had to go get, I forget what it was, a hundred bucks or so. Not too much, and uh, it's work, working out really well. It is very, very sturdy, very strong. I can't rock the bike at all. It's actually far sturdier than if it was on a center stand. The width of it is amazing. So uh, pretty pleased with that. As long as these bolts hold out inside on the bike, um, we'll be fine. Uh, I've got a jack stand on the other side just to make sure. Uh, anyway, there it is. It's the same on the other side. There's no difference. 
So having never had a Goodsy before, um, I can understand why BMW owners and Goodsy owners are so pleased with their bikes, uh, because <laughs> doing the valves is an absolute cinch. I mean, accessing them anyway, they just stick right out here. I had to take a little bit of a trim off here, three, three bolts, take the tops off, and there I am. Who's a burger? It's five hours. Well, four hours. I've got to get the radiators off. I've got to get the tank off. I've got to get the subframe off. Got to... It's incredible to get it all off, drain the coolant out of it. Uh, this is a completely different uh, kettle of fish. Anyway, we'll see how the rest of it goes. Inlet is 0.1 of a mil, uh, tenth of a mil. So uh, here we go for the inlets. This goes in too easily. This goes in fairly easily. There's a tiny bit of friction on it. I think they can both do with a slight tighten. Outlets, according to my manual and what I've seen on the net, there's, there's a bit of uh, argument about it, but uh, this is a 0.15 of a mil. So uh, outlets 0.15 of a mil. And here I go. This goes in very easily. And this goes in very easily. Can I get a 0.2 of a mil in there? Can't quite make it. Let's try that one. Almost halfway, but it stops. Halfway, but it stops. They're probably slightly too big, and they're uh, probably slightly too yeah. big. Yeah, yeah, I can get a 13 in that. And that's about where I want it. It just sort of goes in with that nice feeling. It's not like you have to wrench it out. It's quite easy. I've got just got my, my index finger and my thumb on it. This is the 10, goes in nicely. But a 13th, 13.13 uh, of a mil. Can't get that one in. Noticed a few things with uh, Goodsy nuts and bolts, screws and you name it. I've noticed that uh, they're not always the best fit. So when I was taking the rocker head off there, the rocker cover, uh, I was using a five mil uh, Allen key and uh, it definitely could have been a 5.5 would have fit better. Maybe it was, maybe it's, that's what it's supposed to be. And I've just noticed that um, a seven doesn't go on, but an eight goes on, uh, but it's, look how loose that is. But if I go Imperial and I get it, a, what is it? A five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. That thing fits much tighter. So, um, yeah, uh, technically I think it's supposed to be an eight mil, but uh, maybe a seven and a half, who knows? But a five sixteenths seems to work for me. And then the um, Allen key on top is a, a three mil. Another thing I love about the Goodsy is it's no shim and bucket, which is great. I don't have to look for shims. It's just literally, you know, Get the Allen key, the number three in there. For me, get the five sixteenths on here, loosen it, tighten the Allen key a little bit if I want to close the gap, right? Just to give you a quick heads up, this is uh, again, uh, intake, so 0.1 of a mil. And uh, yeah, this goes in really nicely. Just a little bit of lube, a little bit of lube, just finger, finger smudge of lube on there. And as I push it, it's, yeah, that's nice. And then, you know what I've been doing is wiggling it around here. Just making sure that it stays even and constant there with the gap. So yeah, that's just a, like a, it, it slips and then just a, the tiniest push and I'm putting no more force on it than that. So basically four thousandth of an inch, 0 0.1 of a mil intake. And they both go in pretty nicely now. Just the gentlest of squeezes to get it in there hardly anything just flows in nicely but not enough that i'm fearing that it's too wide okay she's buttoned up these are eight newton meters a piece the spark plug cover is going to be eight newton meters as well the spark plug is 15 newton meters molly coat it before you put it in and you cross tighten these it was relatively simple so uh uh 0.1 mil inlets 0.15 mils uh for exhausts and they were pretty close um, a bit of faffing around with them uh, a couple of times and uh, but I think I got them pretty close 
Now, they aren't the workshop specs. The workshop specs will tell you 0.15 mils for the inlet and 0.20 mils for the exhaust. But uh, apparently they run better like this. So uh, I'll take uh, I'll take the common knowledge and go with that for a bit and see how it is. They were pretty close to that anyway. So I suspect they have either tightened since or they were set to that. It's a bit of a coincidence that they were all really close to those previous specs, the 0.1 mil inlet and the 0.15 mil exhaust okay spark plugs uh just uh go in here so down it goes and on the last one there was a really satisfying click so there oh i love it when it does that instead of that mushy feeling you sometimes get and you're not quite sure if you're in properly you take it out you put it in this has got a lovely firm click to it getting them out i used uh you probably saw i used a bit of cloth a uh, bit of uh, webbing underneath here it pulled it out i've heard people have trouble pulling them out um because this is so close and they'll use some tools and it'll rip so i just used the webbing came off a tree it goes right underneath there pulls off okay put the little doohickey on here it's the spark plug lead cover and believe it or not, this, this is eight Newton meters, which seems a, a fair bit for a tiny screw like this. I didn't actually get it to eight on the other side. I was too worried it was gonna strip it. So yeah, I'll see what this side, I've actually turned this down to seven. We'll see if, see if I can hit seven. That's good enough for me. I'm not going, I am not going eight. And then uh, you take the handy dandy motor Guzzi barge. And on it goes, there it is. That's it, so uh, so far, what have I done? I've replaced the spark plugs, I've replaced the air filter. You didn't see that, it's really simple. It's just underneath the seat, it's so easy. Six screws, out it comes, new air filter in there. And I've uh, tuned the uh, valves now. So now I should be able to run a manometer on it and start to balance the throttle bodies, which are right there. I'll probably do that tomorrow though, it's getting late now. See you in the next one. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mopple Rider, out.